She, Delilah, said unto him, How can you say that you love me when your heart is not with me? You've mocked me these three times, and you've not told me wherein your great strength lies. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all that was in his heart. And he said unto her, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaved, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all that was in his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her lap, and she called for a man and caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he knew not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes, and they brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaved. The story of Samson is the story of human tragedy. It is the story of wasted potential. It is the story of a man that could have been, that should have been, but never was. God had raised up Samson for a special purpose. God had intended that through his life, he was going to begin to deliver the Israelites from the oppression of the Philistines. And so God had placed upon Samson a special calling. Now for this calling, he was to have a special anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when God's Holy Spirit would come upon his life, this guy was super powerful. Now, it is important that we note that the power did not lie in a Mr. America physique. He could have looked like a 97-pound weakling as far as that goes. For the strength wasn't in the physical prowess, but the strength that he had was in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And whenever he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, you couldn't stop him. One night when he was in the city of Gaza and the men of Gaza found out that he was there, they decided to bar and lock the gates of the city in order to hold him captive until the morning in which they were going to ambush him. About midnight he decided to go home, came to the gates of the city, found them locked and barred. And rather than finding the gatekeeper, he just picked up the gates with a post and all carried him on his back for 20 miles and dumped him on a hillside just outside of Hebron. Guy had tremendous strength when the anointing of the Spirit was upon his life. At another time, a whole regiment of the Philistine army had come to take him as a captive. And he picked up a jawbone of a donkey and with it, he killed a thousand of them, tossing their bodies into piles until he looked around and saw these heaps of bodies. And he said, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I've killed a thousand men. A man who had a special anointing of God in order that he might accomplish the calling of God upon his heart. Now, this special anointing of God 
was to come through a consecration of his life unto the Lord. There is tremendous strength in consecration. Men who are dedicated are always powerful men. If you are ever to accomplish anything in life, the accomplishments always come through real dedication. People who just take a happy-go-lucky, take it as it is, or take it or leave it attitude, usually never accomplish very much in life. Those men of accomplishment are always men who have really dedicated themselves unto their task. There's tremendous strength in dedication. As the song goes, give me some men who are stout-hearted men who will fight for the right they adore. Start me with ten who are stout-hearted men and I'll soon give you 10,000 more because there is tremendous power in consecration and in dedication. Now the dedication that he was to have was that of a Nazarite, which word means separation. And he was to take vows of separation by which his life was set apart for God or separated unto the purposes of God was the idea. In the sixth chapter of the book of Numbers, God gives the laws for the Nazarite. Now these are the laws for those who would take the vow of a Nazarite. Number one, there shall be no razor that shall come to his head during the period of his vow. So if you were an Israelite and you decided for a period of time, next month we're going to have Passover, I want to really consecrate my life to God this month, and I'm going to take a vow before God of a Nazarite, and for this whole month I'm just going to separate my life unto God to serve Him and to seek Him and all, then you would not allow a sh uh, you wouldn't shave uh, or get a haircut for a month. It would be the sign of the Nazarite vow. I'm separating myself unto God for this period. Not only that, you were not to drink any uh, grape juice, any wine, anything that came from the vine. You were not to eat any grapes. You were not to eat any raisins. You were not to eat any sarma. Nothing that came from the vine, not the leaves or the grapes or anything from the vine, you were not to uh, eat of it or drink of it during this time of special dedication. And thus, Men in Israel would often take the Nazarite vow in order for a period of time to really consecrate their lives to God. But Samson's was to be a special case. It wasn't to be just for a month or a few months. His was to be a lifelong dedication of his life to God. His mother said, from the time he's born, don't let a razor come to his head. From the time he is born, don't let him drink anything from the vine and so forth, for he shall be a Nazarite or separated unto God from his birth. And in this dedication as a Nazarite, he was to experience the dynamic power of God upon his life through which he could fulfill the call of God, which was to deliver the children of Israel from the oppression of their enemies. Now, as we pick up the story of Samson in our text, we see him defeated by those enemies that he was to defeat. We see the sad spectacle of a once powerful man whose eyes have been gouged out. We see him bound with chains of brass. We see him grinding in the prison house of the Philistines. Our hero, the man that God had chosen and anointed and called for a great ministry, is defeated by the enemies of God. And his life is a sad picture of defeat. He no longer is a terror to the enemies of God, but is actually their laughing stock. 
He's the brunt of their jolts and their jest. The children mock him. The giant has fallen. He has become just like any other man. His life is a wreck. Samson was blind before the Philistines ever poked out his eyes. For as we go back in the story, we read that when Delilah said, The Philistines are upon you, he said, I will get up and shake myself as at other times. And he knew not that the Lord had departed from him. He was blind to his own spiritual state. You see, he had been playing games with the enemy. He had ventured many times over into the enemy's camp. He thought that he had mastered the art of playing with fire without getting burned. There are places where you as a Christian have no place being. There are many places that are designed only to cater to the passions of man's flesh. They're designed only for the arousal of a person's flesh. They are the enemy's territory and you as a child of God have no business being there at any time. But some of you have been playing games in the enemy's territory. You've been venturing over into the enemy's camp. You've been playing with fire and so far you think you've been getting by with it. You're thinking that it really hasn't affected you and your relationship with God, but you're blind, friend. You're blind. What you don't know is that the Spirit of God has departed from you and you're going to wake up one day in a crisis situation and you're going to seek for that power that you've always known and it's not going to be there and you're going to find yourself falling before your enemy. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he also is going to reap. Know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? And he that would be a friend with the world is at enmity with the Father? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For he that hath the love of the world in his heart hath not the love of the Father. It's dangerous to play around with the world and the things in the world. It's dangerous because you can wake up one day sadly to your own realization that God's Spirit has departed from your life. And when you really need it in that hour of crisis, it's not there. He was blind to his own spiritual state. He was out of fellowship with God and he didn't even know it. And it's possible for you to be out of fellowship with God and not even know it. Samson was bound before the Philistines ever wrapped those brass chains around him. He was bound by his own lust. He had a thing for women that destroyed him. Every time he got in trouble, it was because of women. He couldn't leave them alone. He was a chaser. The first problem he ran up against the Philistines was because of this gal in Timnath, fell in love with this gal down there in Timnath. Now he's in love with Delilah. And in the meantime, he's been fooling around with a prostitute in Gaza. Women and the lust after women were the downfall of this man who had the potential of being one of the greatest leaders in the history of God's people. But his own lust mastered him. And he was bound by his own lust before he was ever bound in fetters of brass. I look at people today 
and I see lives that are bound by the flesh by the desires of the flesh and the lust of the flesh. And I see how many strong men it destroys. I see the potentials that are wasted because men cannot conquer over their own flesh. Here is a man who could conquer over a thousand Philistines, but he could not conquer over the passions of his own flesh. It is interesting, the Philistines were interested in this secret of his strength. They hired Delilah, they paid her a handsome fee in order that she might discover the secret of his strength. What was the secret of his strength? Now, if you tell me it was his long hair, you flunked the course. Because having hair doesn't give you strength. <laughs> and I'm not prejudiced either. The long hair of Samson represented the consecration of his life to God. The strength was in the consecration to God, of which the long hair was only a sign. His hair being shaved was the sign of the broken vow, the broken consecration. As long as his life was consecrated unto God, he was invincible. He was a man of power and strength. Once that vow and commitment to God was broken, he was weak, just like any other man. And so it is in your life today. You can know tremendous strength and tremendous power if you will but dedicate your life to God. But without that commitment, you're just like anybody else. What a sad sight it is. What a tragic story. But even more tragic because it is a story that is repeated so often today. I look at so many people that God has endowed with particular abilities and talents. There's just a special something about their life, a charisma or whatever. And I look at them and I think of the vast potential their lives would be as an instrument of God if they would only dedicate themselves unto the Lord. And sometimes I see them come forward and I see them standing here and I see tears going down their cheeks as they are committing their lives to God and I think, all right. And I wait to watch the phenomenal results as, as they have committed now their life to the Lord. But they go back out and they start playing the games again. They forget the commitment that they made. And soon they're bound up again in the things of the world. Soon they're going after their own lust and, and, they're, and, and they didn't achieve, they didn't attain. It was wasted potential. But that's not the end of the story. The story goes on to say, how be it? The hair of his head began to grow again. Somehow, some way, as Samson was there pushing this post around in a circle, 
as he pushed this giant millstone around in a ring and day after day as he was in this grind bound there watching his step because he can't see if there's anything under his feet. Somehow I can see tears rolling down the cheeks from the sockets that were once eyes. And I can hear Samson say, Oh God, what a fool I have been. Oh God, how sorry I am. Oh God, please forgive me. Oh God, let me know the anointing of your spirit once more. Let me feel your power, Lord, once again. Lord, I've wasted my life. I know I have wasted it. God, I am sorry. I repent once more. Please, Lord, one more chance. His hair began to grow again, which signified a renewing of the vow unto God, a renewing of his life. A renewing of that commitment. God, here it is. I'm going to give it to you again. Such as it is. Oh, what a tragedy. Now it's broken. Now it's wasted. He once could walk anywhere with confidence. Into any crowd. Into any situation. But now we see him stumbling. Walking haltingly. His hands out in front of him. Shuffling as he goes. Because he can't see where he's going. He's a wreck of what he once was. But yet he is turning the broken pieces. Back into the hand of the master potter. And he's saying God if just once more. Just once more. The Philistines were having a giant party. They had all gathered in the temple of their God, throngs of them, and they decided to bring in this man who was once a nemesis to them and is now a joke in order that they might mock him, in order that they might have sport with him, in order that they might laugh at what they have done. A man who was once so powerful that he could wipe out a thousand of them was subdued by just a few. And now they're going to make sport. And they brought him in and he heard the laughs and the jeers and the mockery and the taunts of the crowd. As he said to the little boy that was leading him, lead me over to the pillars that hold this place up that I might rest. And as the little boy led him to the pillars, he put his arms around the pillars that held up that temple and said, God, please, once more, I want to know your power. I want to know the anointing of your spirit. Just once more. And God, let me die with a crowd. I don't want to go on living. Lord, just let me die with them. And it said that he took hold of the pillars. And the anointing of God's spirit came upon him and he pulled those pillars together. And the whole temple crumbled and fell and a thousand of the Philistines were crushed to their death and under the pile the crushed body of Samson. The man who could have been, the man who should have been, but the man who never was, the full person that God wanted him to be. Yet, God's grace allowed him to once again experience the power of God and the final act of God's Spirit upon his life was the crowning event of his whole life. He knew then a greater victory over the enemies of God than he did through his entire lifetime. God was gracious unto him. Some of you today who look at your life 
and you weep over the wasted years. You look back and you see what God has done and what you could have done for God. But you've wasted that time on yourself. And now you look around and life doesn't have any excitement or any meaning, any purpose. You look at the things that you've amassed and they are meaningless to us, to you and life has become a grind. You find yourself bound by your own flesh. You haven't felt God's presence in a long time. You say, oh God, please again, let me know your power. Let me know your presence, the anointing of your spirit. And let me tell you something. If you would but commit your life to God today, you can yet see that work of God that he wants to do accomplished. If you'll but dedicate your life to him, there's power in dedication. God has not given up on his purposes for you. God still wants to use you as his instruments to defeat the enemies of God. And if you will but consecrate yourself to him, you can know the mighty work and power of God in your life today. And you can be what you should be as you make that commitment. Shall we pray?